Quarantine is a word we've all had to get used to in the last few months while dealing with the coronavirus crisis. However, it's not a new strategy. It has a dark and complex history used to help stop the spread of diseases. There's a grim reminder of that right here in Hampton Roads. Madison Glassman takes us there. Well, Lena, if you pass this sign that I'm about to show you, let's say maybe six months ago on ODU's campus, you may not have given it a second glance. Now, it's certain to make you stop in your tracks. Quarantine Road runs right through campus. There was once two quarantine houses that stood on opposite ends of the road, about three and a half miles apart. Well, in 1783, the Virginia Assembly passed a public health law that required vessels coming from foreign ports to undergo quarantine if there was a suspicion of infectious disease on board. Sound familiar? Well, Annette Finley Crosswhite, a history professor at ODU, says captains wouldn't divulge information about the crew's health condition so they wouldn't have to go to quarantine stations. Finley Crosswhite says that contributed to the spread of yellow fever in 1855. Well, this paints a stunning similarity to what we're experiencing today with COVID 19's regulations. After the American Revolution and after the French Revolution, Many people empowered as citizens with rights began to say, well, I have a right to not be in quarantine. Sort of like you hear today, some people saying, I have a right to not wear a mask. Finley Crosswhite says history has taught us that disease destroys economies. At the time, Norfolk was on the rise as a port town when the yellow fever broke out, and the city's economy took a major hit and was nearly beyond the point of no return. Economies are devastated because of quarantine. In 1855, if you read the newspapers, it talks about the fact that the businessmen don't know what to do. People can't make a living. Despite the more than two century time difference, doctors and nurses were some of the unsung men and women back in 1855. But that's not it. Finley Crosswhite says there's a very little reference to them in newspapers and history books. But it was slaves and free, free blacks who sustained vital services in the city and helped nurse the sick. Lena? 